We have issued some clarifications to our revenue standard, IFRS 15. IFRS 15, the revenue standard, was introduced in May 2014, uh, and it was brought about and done jointly with the United States to solve perceived problems with our previous standards. In our case, we had two standards that covered revenue, IS 11 and IS 18, uh, and we thought there were deficiencies in those standards and it would be useful to bring them together in one comprehensive principle-based standard. The United States, on the other hand, had a multiple number of standards covering revenue, quite rules-based, and they too thought it was worthwhile to bring them together under one standard with us, with the ultimate goal being that revenue will be reported consistently around the world regardless of the standards that you are following. The clarifications, what are they? And we should emphasise these are just clarifications, not basic changes to the standard. The, stand, the basics of the standard and the principles of the standard remain the same. Three major areas where we provided clarifications. Uh, one was in defining performance obligations. The second one was to do with principal and agent, whether you're a principal and agent, which is reflected in how you report revenue, whether you're one or the other. And the third one was to do with licensing and whether you should take up revenue at a point in time or over a period of time. We also did some relief on transition um, to allow our constituents to transition from the old standards to the new standards more easily. So why have we done these clarifications? Well, there's a little bit of history to this. When we'd finished the standard with our American colleagues, we decided to form a transition resource group. Now, this is the first time we have had a transition resource group. Uh, the aim of the resource group was to provide discussion on the implementation of the standard, to, to talk out any problems. It was not an authoritative group. It's not a group that can make rules or change the standard itself. It was a discussion group where uh, matters could be brought forward. It's been very successful in that regard and a large number of matters were discussed. There were three that we thought were worthy of making clarifications to the standard. And these are the three that have been brought forward along with some transition relief. Um, and so that's the process that was followed and that's the reason that the clarifications have been made. We have decided not to schedule any further meetings of our transition resource group in the meantime. This is different from the United States who have decided they will schedule new meetings for their transition resource group. Now, we are going to continue to monitor the standard and the implementation issues that arise. We are not ignoring the situation and just walking away. We have available on our website an ability for our constituents to submit their difficulties to us and we can deal with them in a variety of ways. We will be observing the US part of the Transition Resource Group when they meet and we'll be very conscious of any um, issues that arise and we'll be taking them into account. While we haven't scheduled meetings for the TRG, we have not disbanded it. It still stands in place and if necessary, it can be recalled to discuss matters. Our emphasis though is on stability at this stage. We feel that our constituents really need now to get on with implementation and they need a stable platform um, to achieve that. So we will have quite a high hurdle for making any more changes to the standard. At this stage we have no intention of changing the standard again. Obviously if something really crucial came up we would have to reconsider that decision. But at this stage we have no intention of doing so.